Hello, authorized foundation personnel. I'm Knox, but all of you tend to call me SCP. As many of you are aware, due to a containment breach at this facility, which I had nothing to do with, there has been a hiatus in my lectures. Now that the SCPs are back in containment and damage is repaired, we will be resuming as before. And how good it is to look out at all your broad, smiling faces once again. Anyways, today's lecture will be quite short. Its content is an introduction to the final part of Ouroboros, The Cycle Proposal, Part 4, The Way It Ends. Quite a mouthful, I know. I will begin by reading at the start of the document as usual, but pause before getting into the meat of things to explain how the next several lectures on this topic will progress. If you have not yet been briefed on Part 1, Part 2, or Part 3 of this proposal, you may wish to look back into the video archives before starting this lecture. And now, on to the beginning of the end. DJ Cactus Proposal Ouroboros The Cycle Proposal Part 4 The Way It Ends Item Number SCP-001 Security Clearance Level 6 Cosmic Top Secret Containment Class Esoteric Secondary Class Principalis Disruption Class Amida Risk Class Notice Special Containment Procedures it is the imperative of the Overseer Council to establish containment of SCP-001. Description To know the nature of SCP-001 is to know the nature of the Foundation. For more information, see document 001-GOI.01-Operatus. Addendum 001.1 Attached Documentation the first man stood alone on the barren field, and in the distance he saw the locked gate beyond which his greatest shame was kept. He turned to the snake who writhed on its belly like a worm, and cursed it for its treachery. You tricked me, the man said. You led my hand astray, and now we are damned for it. The snake sighed. I gave you knowledge, it said, and with that knowledge you made the choice you made. I could not make it for you. The man cried out, All the same, trusting you was my greatest mistake. No, the snake said, your greatest mistake was believing you had a choice at all. Now we will be taking a look at the aforementioned attached document, 001-GOI.01-Operatus, which appears to be from the Chaos Insurgency. Desiro Catalog Number SC-001-13-001-03 Document Type Summa Modus Operandi Dates Received Not Available Operation Status Closed Forward We, the Delta Command, do hereby set in motion the principles of this document, the Summa Modus Operandi of the Chaos Insurgency. We hold the following to be inescapable truths. The Foundation Overseers have altered the fabric of reality for the benefit of their own wicked desires. These alterations are the source of all supernatural activity in our universe. These grievances we hold against them. The 13th Overseer has blasphemed the natural order in his foul contract to stay the hand of death, and has usurped the fragile balance of life and given an impenetrable shield to the horrid adulterers of the Foundation. The Twelfth Overseer has stolen the wealth of the world to benefit the Foundation's insidious designs, and has taken the fruits of many millions for the purpose of turning those labors against laborers. The Eleventh Overseer has spun a circle of lies around the people of this world to protect the Foundation's interests and has cast a dark eye onto the void to gaslight and pervert true human understanding. The Tenth Overseer has kept a dubious record of the Foundation's malfeasances and altered history to suit them, and has mocked truth and reason for the sake of maintaining the Foundation's cruel legacy. The Ninth Overseer has betrayed the trust of their fellow man and sworn allegiance to the Cancerous Council, 
and has time and time again turned away from opportunities to strike them down to prolong their greed-riddled intentions. The Eighth Overseer has committed wicked acts against the ignorant public with their careless use of nuclear weapons, and was one of the first to breathe life into an organization that should have been butchered in the crib. The Seventh Overseer has manipulated innocent populaces to create chaos and destruction for the Foundation's benefit, and has shown nothing but contempt and malfeasance against the innocent and unwitting. The Sixth Overseer has surreptitiously used the might of the American military machine to crush the Foundation's enemies and wrought a tale of never-ending violence and bloodshed that has forever stained this world. The Fifth Overseer has warped the very boundaries between space and time to extend the Foundation's cruel reach and taken dark and horrible secrets from those far-off places to use them to fuel the Foundation's death machine. The Fourth Overseer has lulled the nations of the world into believing that the Foundation means them no harm while working alongside the same treacherous intentions that would see this planet laid to waste. The Third Overseer has used mankind's own technologies against them to act as the all-seeing watcher of the Overseers, spinning a web of eyes that has eroded every last shred of human privacy and decency. The second Overseer is complicit. The first Overseer has established a council of monsters and demons that answer at his beck and call, all so he may sit on his foul throne atop the putrid wound of the Foundation and lap like a dog from its seeping, pustulant orifice. The Overseer's cancerous, anomalous influence on the world is a wound on the fabric of the universe. A wound that festers, cannot heal until the irritant is removed. The Thirteen Foundation Overseers are the irritant in the wound on our reality. The Thirteen Foundation Overseers must be removed. By order of the engineer and of those who stepped down, we stand in defiance of this aberration. We stand in opposition to this blasphemy against nature. We stand insurgent against this chaos. Our path is clear, our vision unclouded. We must clean out the wound. We must let our universe heal. We must destroy the 13 Foundation Overseers. Now, what follows this is a series of entries on each of the O5s. Some include lengthy addendums, notes, journals, and stories. As such, lecturing on all of this information in a single session would be overwhelming, both in duration and density. As for today, we will stop here. The next lectures will each focus on several of the O5s, including descriptions and all attached documentation relating to them. Please keep an eye on your personnel schedules so that you do not miss these lectures. If you are unable to be in attendance, the full video logs will be uploaded to the archive for later viewing. That is all I have for you today. As always, Knox.